The Prime Minister's return to the Imperial Order was probably the last thing we expected to be reporting on today. Tony Abbott's reintroduction of knights and dames brings the Queen back into the centre of Australia's highest order. It's delighted monarchists and brought howls of dismay from Republicans. The first new dame, a knight, will be the outgoing Governor-General Quentin Bryce and her replacement, General Peter Cosgrove. I'm joined now by monarchist Professor David Flint and Republican Greg Barnes. Um, David Flint, I'll start with you, if I may. Now, now this offshoot of the British imperial system has been reintroduced, would you accept a knighthood were it to be offered? Well, it's not really an offshoot of the British imperial system. This is part of the Order of Australia, removed by the Hawke government and restored by the Abbott government. But, but, I, but based on the British imperial system? Oh, certainly, as, as are our laws, as, uh, as is our language. We are in many ways derivative of uh, an English-speaking society, as is the United States. And would you accept the, off the, um, the order where it offered? Well, uh, you put me... Uh, if, if my sovereign offered me an honour, I would accept that honour. Greg Barnes, I'll go to you. Now, Malcolm Turnbull, probably the country's most famous Republican, has said that um, Republicans actually shouldn't leave any sleep over this tonight. Are you sanguine like Malcolm Turnbull, or are you, is your blood up? Oh, well, I, the first thing I had to look at when I came into the studio tonight was whether we were on black and white TV or we were in colour. Um, I mean, are we back in the 1960s or are we a 21st century nation that's confident? Um, I know Malcolm would disapprove of this move. I know Andrew Robb and other Republicans in the Liberal Party would disapprove of this move because it's juvenile. Uh, it reflects the fact that uh, Australia cringes when it comes to moving forward and adopting sim symbols of our own. Uh, and it's a bit like the return by uh, uh, silks around Australia in the profession, I mean law, uh, going back to QC. What is it about this country uh, that we continually want to hang on to the baubles and trinkets of an empire in decline instead of looking uh, at moving forward? I mean, Now, I'm going to have to interrupt you there because juvenile baubles and trinkets, I have to let Professor Flint have his say about that. Do these, do these honours have real meaning to you or are they, as Greg Barnes says, mere um, decorations? They're a recognition of uh, people who have achieved great things. There have been something we've had here in this country since its foundation, since its settlement, and it's something which is replicated in many republics. The French Republic, for example, offers knighthoods, as does the Italian Republic. It's not something restricted to monarchies. It's not childish. It is proper and appropriate that we recognize people who have achieved a lot and uh, I would have suggested and I did suggest at the time that after the liberation of Timor in which he played such a significant role General Cosgrove should have been knighted then. Um, Greg Barnes were you surprised that um, uh, Qu that Quentin Bryce acceded to this extension of the honor system given that she's someone who's spoken of a potential future Australian head of state? Well it's always disappointing um, when people seem, uh, seem to put uh, honours and the need for uh, um, honours either before their name or after their name ahead of personal principle. I thought Quentin Bryce was a person of commitment and a person of intellectual commitment to Australia having its own head of state instead of to having uh, uh, the British monarchy. But uh, unfortunately, uh, she may have succumbed. But that's the problem with these, with these, uh, these sorts of uh, knighthoods. I mean, I see uh, my old friend David Flint said he'd take one. I, I, I thought, you know, earlier tonight, I thought old Flint, he'd love one of these uh, knighthoods. He'd love it. And, I mean, it's, it's people who are sort of scared of moving into the future. They're scared of an Australia which stands on its own two feet, uh, that want to, you know, they want to revert back to this silly order, just like QCs. I mean, when, when will this country grow up? The Americans grew up in 1776 and have done extremely well without it. By the way, we've done extremely well since 1986 without having knighthoods. I haven't noticed the economy floundering. I haven't ho noticed that people don't feel that they're special when they get an AO. You know, it's absurd, but it does reflect one thing, that Tony Abbott is obsessed with being anglophilic. He's obsessed with it. Uh, <laughs> Professor Flint, I'm going to have to go back to you there. That's a, a, an extraordinary attack on something that you hold very dear. Do you understand, though, why it is that Tony Abbott has introduced this move at this stage? He's introduced it because this is the sort of thing that was awarded to the greatest general in the First World War. General Monash was knighted on the battlefield by the king himself. Dame Nellie Melba was made a dame. Uh, Donald Bradman received a knighthood. This is the thing which in our tradition and in our history is the appropriate recognition. This is part 
of our traditions. This is part of being Australian, and this should be this should continue. It the suspension of this was an aberration. It was in anticipation of a decision being made in 1999 to become a politician's republic. The people overwhelmingly decided that they would remain a crowned republic. They decided that in every state and 72% of electorates. The now, people want to stay a constitutional monarchy. Now, Greg Barnes, back to you. One of the things that uh, Tony Abbott was asked about today when he made this annou announcement, he, he said it was for people who, um, who have accepted public life. However, he didn't completely rule out the possibility of politicians receiving these honours. What would be the response to an ennobled politician, do you think? Uh, well, it ought to be one of contempt. I mean, uh, I, what I'm interested to see is Will Hodgman, the newly minted Premier of Tasmania, is a mad keen Republican. I'm sure Will would be totally opposed to this. Colin Barnett in Western Australia, a Liberal Premier, uh, who campaigned very well on the Republic in 1999. I'd like to hear their views because if people are going to be intellectually consistent uh, as Republicans, they ought to say uh, that Australia ought to move forward. But I'll tell you one thing about this order. Politicians won't be able to help themselves uh, because they love a lot of them, uh, they just love the idea of, uh, of taking some form of, uh, uh, some form of accolade and they just love the idea of a title. So you can bet your bottom dollar that you'll see politicians queuing up because they feel a need, they've got the insecurity and so they feel a need to have these sorts of, as I said, trinkets and baubles. If you really, if you really considered uh, yourself to be a worthy person, you wouldn't be lining up for the OBEs and the MBEs and the knighthoods. You wouldn't be doing it. And just because John Monash and Dame Nellie Melba did it, I'll just remind David, that was 100 years ago. We have actually moved on, in case David hasn't noticed. And one more, one more thing that Tony Abbott raised today was he said it's very clear that these knights and dames will outrank the, um, the ordinary order of Australia. Um, we've all seen a bit of Downton Abbey. Um, aren't the existing AOs tonight going to be feeling a bit second class? Well, of course they are. Not only that, let, we, we've uh, got a week where you're allowed to be a bigot as well as being a knight. Let, me, let me give week. that to David Flint as well, if I may. Well, I, I think they will understand that the three-level order of Australia is deficient in being a three-level order. Most uh, orders in the world are five-level orders and there is an obvious gap in the suspension of uh, knights and dames by the Hawke government and we have its restoration today. Remember that when Gough Whitlam introduced the order of Australia we still had knighthoods, parallel knighthoods, which came through the imperial system. Malcolm Fraser filled that void by creating Knights of Australia and Dames of Australia and now we've had this restored and I can't think of two more appropriate people than the Governors General. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. I look forward to continuing this discussion with you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.